What's up YouTube? Anthony from The Rock Studio here. We're going to do another quick video today. This one is a problem solver for my studio where I have a bunch of guitar heads in the control room and one speaker cabinet in the tracking room. And I'm always going back and forth, turning on an amp, switching the speaker cable, switching to another amplifier just over and over and it's getting annoying especially when you're reamping a lot of tracks and you've got to switch back and forth for a different sound all the time. Anyways, so I wanted to build myself a amp selector switch box. So check it out. It's a quick video. You can follow along if you want to build something like this for yourself. It's pretty cool. This is a really simple project. There's no relays. There's no logic, anything like that. It's just a simple mechanical rotary switch uh, and some soldering. So anybody can do this if you want to get into this sort of thing. Think of it sort of as a skill builder video and you can have something really useful when you're done. So follow along with me, Anthony from The Rock Studio, and I hope you enjoy. This is the block diagram I drew for this project. My amp heads are out here, and the speaker outputs from the heads comes up one of these blue lines into the input selector switch. The speaker wires are indicated on this diagram as just a single colored wire. Just remember that you're going to have a black or white or a plus and minus you're gonna have two wires instead of one. So the poles of the input switch feed, in my case, one of the toggle switches. Yours might go straight to the output jack uh, to feed your cabinet. Let me walk you through how I did mine. Let's pretend that these two toggle switches act as one giant toggle switch. So the selector switch feeds the center pole of the first toggle. When the switches are in the up position, the signal passes right through and goes to the center pole of the second toggle switch out to the cabinet. When I flip the toggle switches down, it brings the signal out to the load box, and then from the load box, right here, makes a connection with the center pole of the second toggle switch and goes out to the cabinet. So basically, you plug your amplifier heads in out here, pick which one you want to use, and that will go via these switches to the cabinet. The first thing you're going to need is a rotary switch. This is a really nice one. It is from Electro Switch. It's very expensive at the price of $39.41 but it's really good and it's going to last a really long time. It has one pole per deck. It has two decks, 12 positions. You can pick up to 12 amplifiers or you can set it to use as few amplifiers as you like, two amplifiers or whatever. The next thing you're going to need is a knob. So I picked a basic knob. This one has a little indicator on it and it will fit a quarter inch shaft and it has a set screw. So it'll fit that switch that I picked out, but you can pick any knob you want. Um, just look at the spec sheet for the switch. Next, you'll need some quarter inch jacks. The place for that kind of thing is redco.com. Go to connectors and adapters, connectors TS, and then second page, you'll find this Neutrik 375 a piece. This is the one to get. It's really good and it's very narrow profile. The next thing that we need is a project enclosure. I bought a very inexpensive one off of eBay for 11 bucks. This is just big enough to do the job. Then I bought these cheap strain relief things. They're called Thread Cable Wire Strain Relief Cord Grip for Pendant Light Sockets Lamp Fitting on eBay again for $6.07. They actually worked out really well for the thin speaker cable, 14 gauge speaker cable. I already had the speaker cable on hand, so I didn't need to buy any of that. I didn't mention that I'm gonna be using two toggle switches on this project. You may not need these if you're building one of these, but check it out. What I'm doing is I wanna be able to switch in and out my load box here in the studio. So you may not need them, you may need them, whatever. Just pick out two DPDT toggle switches and put them in there. So I've already drilled the holes in the project enclosure, and then I scuffed it up real good with some light sandpaper and water, like a wet sand, took it outside, and started painting. I had to do this twice because I didn't wet sand it at first, and the, all the paint came off. Then I masked off a couple areas for some different color paint and squirted that stuff. Now let's get to soldering. The tabs on the switch are sort of sensitive. You don't want to bend them too much or they'll break. So this is kind of a practice in being very careful with your stuff. Obviously it's a $40 switch and you don't want to mess up. You'll see me doing my quick easy way to tin a wire end. And that's to wrap the solder around the wire a little bit and then heat it up and let it soak in. That's a real easy way for me to tin the wires. And then it's just soldering a whole bunch of wires on. You see the parallel rows of tabs on that switch. Those are the two decks. So each color wire sticks to one deck. So for instance, the top deck is all white and the bottom deck is all black. You can see I put a little heat shrink tube on there to keep the wires from bending and maybe touching in the future. So here I'm just shrinking up those little bits of heat shrink tube. Also get that stuff from Redco. Then I'm gonna wire up the toggle switches. I had to do this for both of them in my case. I also put some heat shrink tube on there and tighten them up. I forgot to mention you're gonna to need to buy some quarter inch jacks. I really should have used isolated jacks, but this is sort of a prototype. So you get those off of Redco as well. 
So now I'm going to mount everything on the box. It gets difficult with all those wires hanging out. And I always put a little thread lock on the nuts. Get them in there. Then it's just a matter of stuffing every single wire, getting them all organized and as neat as possible in there. Time to put the lid on. That's awesome. Things are really coming together. Put the four bottom feet on. Ooh, forgot to tell you, you got to solder all those quarter inch jacks on the other end of the speaker wires. Now we get to the point where I am binding the two toggle switches together so they'll work in unison. So I cut a little piece of aluminum flat bar, drilled some holes in the switch and the flat bar to match, and used some XLR jack mounting screws with a 440 thread to hold the bar together. Now we're on to my favorite part of most builds, which is putting the final touches on. In this case, I'm going to put some self-adhesive labels on so I know what amplifier I'm listening to. And I made my labels actually specify which amplifier it was because I have a certain number of amps that I keep in here all the time. And then I have two spare cables on the back and one front input to choose from, bringing us to a total of seven possible amplifiers. Now we're going to go into the studio with some live video where I had my wife jam on the guitar and I flipped around through the amplifiers. So take a look. Okay. Mark five, number two. Right here. Okay, play. Pause. Switch it to load box. Play. Okay. Pause. Flip to standby. Switch cable. Go down to the Mark IV. Off of standby. Let's switch this first to Mark IV. Switch. There we go. Okay, perform. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video. It was really fun to make and it's super useful and I'm just having the time of my life not having to reach behind my amplifiers every five minutes and switch something out. If you like what you saw, come and check us out again. Hit subscribe or just come visit us one time and take a look. There's always something cool here, something you might find useful in your line of work or your studio or your live show. Uh, anyway, I'm Anthony from The Rock Studio and I'll see you next time.